Hey, what's going on guys? It's Kyle here. I'm bringing you another video today. I'm trying a different angle out. Hopefully it's a little bit better. I feel a little bit more comfortable standing up than uh, sitting on the floor so you guys don't have this weird view of my crotch. Uh, <laughs> obviously no one wants that. Okay, so today, you know, sometimes in the winter, well, a lot of times in the winter, uh, it's hard to make videos. You don't always have uh, topics to talk about, but today I'm going to be discussing a popular trend in bass fishing that I generally really like. The topic of discussion today is big baits. Big baits catch big fish. Plain and simple. You don't want to catch a dink on a big swim bait. Um, but they also have their disadvantages. If you're going to the big bait, you're most likely not going to catch that many fish. Um... I feel like for the practical angle, I'm, I'm sorry, for the recreation, rec recreational angler, I feel like a big bait may not necessarily be what you want to go with. Um, I'm going to grab my tackle bag right here, and I'm just going to show you guys. Uh, I don't even have any big baits at the moment. I genuinely don't even have any big baits. I have a couple of swim baits uh, that are musky baits, but they're in the garage right now, so I don't have any readily available for you guys to see. I'm going to show you what I think is the biggest bait that you, as a rec uh, recreational angler, will throw unless you're specifically targeting a day where you want, all you want to catch is, um, a big fish. This is the biggest lure I think you'll throw, a casting spoon or a flutter spoon, uh, because you can actually catch a lot of different sizes on this. But this is actually the biggest bait, and the, probably the biggest crank bait you're going to go with is probably something around this size, honestly. This is a Rapala DT-16, if you guys are wondering. Honestly, I wouldn't recommend going with anything much bigger than that. But, if you're like me, and you're a tournament angler... You want some big baits in your locker. I'm actually going to Cabela soon. Uh, I don't know. I think Monday? I'm not exactly sure what day. But I'm going to be trying to pick up a Mega Bass swim bait. Uh, I'll make a video on that as soon as I possibly can. Uploads next week may not be as regular as they have been so far because I'm actually going to be away. But we'll see how the Wi-Fi is and my time schedule. We'll see how it is. Alright. So, as a... Regulation of angler, throwing a big bait may not always be in your best interest, but as a tournament angler, I think that it's important to have days where you're just going to be like, you're catching some fish, you're marking fish on your radar, on your your fish finder, for example, like your, uh, your Hummingbird Helix 5, which is my fish finder, something like that. And you're marking big fish, but you're catching the little ones. You're catching, uh, I mean, two pounders, one pounders. Two pounders for around here is it's pretty good, but if you're in Texas, which hopefully I will be next year, a uh, two pounder is not that great. So, but you're marking fish that look about four, five, six, seven, eight pounds, and you want to catch those fish. Throw a big bait, they're going to hit a big bait. What sense does it make for a big fish to expend as much energy on a small meal that isn't going to fill it up and isn't going to do the good when it needs big bait and big meals to be worth expending its energy? So that's how that fish got that big, eating gizzard shad that are like this long, not eating a little tiny bait fish that's about this big. I mean, if they hit a whole ball of them, like if you throw in an A-rig, um... Or umbrella rig, whatever, whichever you call it. Uh, me, you're gonna catch a big fish because I mean, not necessarily, but that's I would consider that a big bait because while it has many different small baits on it, it's a big profile in the water and it's something that a big fish would hit. So when it comes down to it, you have to decide what you're doing that day, uh, what kind of an angler you are. If you're a tournament angler, most definitely have some big baits in your locker which is why I'm going to get big baits and jigs the next time that I'm going uh, to get some tackle. I'm going to prioritize big baits first and then if I have some extra money 
we're going to get some jigs. Uh, my favorite brand of jigs, if you guys are wondering, is Omega Jigs. I really like the color scheme of them. That's the reason why I like them. And, uh, yeah, so if you're a tournament angler and you want to win tournaments, want to catch the biggest fish possible, you got to throw big baits. I mean, you're going to get some nice sized fish on regular crankbaits and regular sized baits, but you want that trophy sized lunker winning fish, throw a big bait. But you might not catch anything, so you got to remember that there's risk and reward. The, the reward is a big fish. The risk is not catching any fish. If you're a recreational angler just looking to have fun, I don't recommend. I just recommend staying away from the big baits entirely. Look at the prices of the of the really big baits, uh, the good swim baits. They're expensive because you want to know why? They're made and designed for serious tournament anglers, and the serious tournament anglers are the guys who can spend money on bass fishing. If you're just a regular guy, this many crankbaits. Um, is not gonna be something that you're gonna be doing if you if you're just a regular angler. I mean, this isn't even that many crankbaits. I ideally want to have about six of these full of it, but you're not gonna be going out and spending, you know, twenty five dollars on a mega bass crankbait if you're just a casual angler. You're probably just gonna be buying, you know, a few crankbaits, a few soft plastics, a few top waters, and that's it. You're not going to be filling up with all this stuff, and you're not going to be spending as much money. So, when I say you're a recreational angler, uh, there's absolutely nothing wrong with being a recreational angler. recreational angler. Don't take anything offense to it, but if you see things that are very pricey, it probably means it's directed towards the tournament angler. Like the Amakatsu Gilroids, the Mega Bass Lures, Stuff like that, um, the dual realis, those kind of things are geared to the serious tournament angler or California, Texas, those kind of things. But yeah, remember that always have to match your bait with your situation and you always have to match the hatch. If you're in a lake with big uh, baits, gizzard shads and stuff like that, throw a big shad mimicking bait. To help you catch the fish. If you're in a, if you're in uh, a lake with a lot of small baits, there are small baits. It's all about matching the hash. It's also all about what you're going to accomplish that day. If you keep that in mind, you can be a successful angler. And knowing your situations and knowing which bait to throw and knowing when to throw it are helping as well. But you always want to start at the very basics, and the very basic is what is my ultimate goal. For me, my ultimate goal is to win the tournament. It's to win because the biggest fish possible, because the biggest weight bag possible. My goal every single tournament is to hit 15 pounds a bag. And while that sounds pretty small, up around here, that's probably about 3 pounds per fish. That is huge around here. If you get 5 3 pounders, you're winning every single tournament. So my goal is 15 pounds a bag every single time. Um, so I always throw bigger baits uh, to make sure that. Those are what I'm catching. I start off the day obviously with slower, smaller baits, but I work my way up to the big baits. Once I catch a few to get on the board, I catch a couple two pounders, a couple one and a halfs. Then I start throwing something big. Uh, I actually really like to throw a flutter spoon or a casting spoon. I need to get a new flutter spoon, but uh, something like this is a casting spoon. This isn't a flutter spoon. I love to throw these. Those are really, those are tournament winning baits right there. I think there's a lot of fish on those, but yeah. Keep that in mind, guys. I hope these tips helped you. I hope that they help you become a better bass angler. I hope you're enjoying my channel. I'm enjoying creating this channel for you guys. Um, once again, videos every two days. Sometimes, uh, if I upload back-to-back -back days, it'd probably be uh, another two to three days from that one upload. I might give myself a day leeway if I give you guys up, but I'm just trying to make the same amount of content every week, probably around uh, three or four videos a week. Uh, so, yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please let me know what you think about this in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe for more content. Also, remember my Snapchat is in the description below. That's the best way to get in contact with me. And also, I'll be posting every single catch from next season. Every single one, even from the smallest bluegill to uh, the biggest bass to a uh, muskie to striped bass to whatever I catch. Every single fish I catch is going to be on my Snapchat. I'll make sure I could do that. For you guys, and also if you are wondering about sponsoring me, if you want to sponsor me, I know this subscriber count is low right now, but I'm hoping it's going to grow. 
and pick up once I start actually getting a GoPro and fishing and showing you guys what I'm doing when I'm fishing. Uh, if you want to sponsor me, if you want to help me out, shoot me an email down below. It's kylezelma at gmail.com. And you guys, always remember to keep tight lines and keep fishing.